Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about my landing page, which is the second project in the foundations component of the Odin project. So here is my GitHub repository, and it's in my Odin landing page repository. So right off the bat here, there's something I could do to improve. Uh, I could organize these files a little better. So as you come in, there's lots of image files in the root project folder, which is not great. Uh, they should be in their own images folder, so it's nice and clear what the folders are, where my readme is, and where my index.html is. Uh, and in my readme, I just have a very brief description of what this project is and, and what it's using, so HTML, CSS, and Flexbox. And I have a live link to the page. And the idea here with this project is to really um, use your HTML and CSS to style this website and Flexbox to uh, organize the HTML elements on the page as best as you can to mirror the page that the Odin project provides you to emulate. So as you can see, we have a uh, like a, a nav bar at, at the top, <coughs> excuse me, with a um, kind of a header and some links. Then we have a hero div, which has some text and a button, as well as an image. And then we have uh, another section here with some tiles along with a title and then we have another section with a quote and a right justified attribute and then we have a sign up box down at the bottom or like a call to action box and at the base we have the footer and everything is nicely centered and aligned using flexbox or right justified where it needs to be such as this button and this attribute uh, there is some there is some uh, flexibility in this design as well. So if we're looking at it from the desktop, for example, these tiles here I had some fun using flex wrap to make sure that each of these images falls below onto a second line when the, uh, the width gets narrower. So you can see here we go from four to three and three becomes two rows. And then once it gets so narrow, it just stacks on top of each other to make one column and four rows. So that's achieved using flex wrap. Uh, as you can see also the in the hero, the image has disappeared. And that's because I just applied a media query to that image to tell it to disappear once it gets so narrow. That's not a requirement of this project. Uh, it was just something that uh, my wife was talking about and I decided to give it a go. Uh, it's definitely not mobile friendly. It's not designed for mobile. It's, it's desktop only, uh, but that's that's okay. That's mobile friendly comes later. Mobile design comes later in the curriculum. Uh, the the goal here is really just to apply it to a desktop uh, browser. So this is what it looks like. Yours will probably look somewhat similar to this. And then looking at the files themselves, I won't go too much into detail. What I'll do is I'll throw in my uh, a link to my this github repository in the description of this video so you can take a look there uh, but the files to really pay attention to are the index html and the style so within the index html you can see here that compared to the recipes page the first project uh, we're starting to use divs to to separate the content on the page um, so we have, for example, a header div, which contains kind of the, the main title for the site, as well as a list, which contains the, the links in the kind of the nav bar at the top, I guess you call it. And then we have a hero div, or it's, it's a div with class hero. And this is split up into some more divs to separate out the text and the image. And every site you make should have an H1. It's something that's very important for especially uh, search engine optimization. Uh, your site will get scraped and the H1 will be the thing that uh, it's looking for. So you've got to make sure that you have only one of these, but have one on your page as a general best practice. Um, you can see that we have another div for, I've called it the class information, but this is where those tiles are um, held. And these are the ones that stack up on top of, the, of each other as the page gets narrower. And these 
themselves are made up of separate divs. One thing I can tell you right off the bat here that I should have done that I would do differently now is, for example, here, this should be indented two spaces. This tag, this image tag within this div should be indented as well. Um, this image tag should be indented. And I was looking at this a couple minutes ago and I thought I was missing a closing div tag, but it's actually over here. And that's not great practice. This closing div should be down here. Um, and you sh I, I, I should have had it indented appropriately so that my opening div tags line up with my closing div tags, kind of like th this one here lines up with this one here. In fact, it doesn't even line up properly. As you can see, this uh, should be space indented one more time. So I definitely didn't lay this HTML out uh, properly or the way I would do now. Um, it makes it harder to read when you don't have your tags laid out uh, according to best practice. And I was certainly having a little bit of a challenge for a couple of minutes figuring out what I'd done here until I realized I was missing indentations and proper formatting. Um, if you're using VS Code, there are plugins or extensions that you can get that help with the formatting, um, especially in, in, in you know, JavaScript and, and Ruby. Um, but in HTML, I think it's, it's just definitely good to use Emmet, which will uh, do a lot of this formatting for you. But always pay attention and double check things just so yourself or someone else comes along later, you know uh, it's structured properly and it's easier to read. Um, so again, I'm not going to go into too much detail. There's just a couple more divs here to separate out the other sections of the page, each with their own classes that get operated upon in the CSS file. So you can see the CSS style.css file here. Um, I think it's generally a best practice to um, reset some of the default settings that happen because browsers are all different. They all have different settings in CSS and you can reset some of these uh, by applying them to, uh, to all. You can certainly look up on that um, in more detail and it is covered in detail in the Odin curriculum. Um, what else? I mean, I, again, I'm not going to go through here in detail. I will put the link down below so you can take a look. But for example, you can see we're using Flexbox here to uh, structure the header um, and the same with structuring the list for the links. And there's a couple things I would do differently in here, like I'm using percentages for my padding. I think using EM is uh, better practice than this. Um, but, you know, this is all experimental at this, at this stage. I think you just play around with it and you try and get it to work the way you want it to work. Um, and play around with the sizes of your screen. Make sure things don't look too funky or too broken. When your screen gets so small, like down to mobile size, it will not look great because that's not the object of this this uh, exercise in particular. But, you know, play around with it and make sure you're happy with how it's laid out. Um, so hopefully you'll take a look at this um, if you are interested or have any questions. But I just wanted to give you a quick overview of what mine looked like and some of the imperfections, some of the things that I would do differently. And maybe, um, maybe you've made some of those similar mistakes too, especially around formatting. So it's something to bear in mind. Okay, again, any questions or comments, please leave them below and see you later.